Hello, welcome to Encore. I'm Michelle Harrison Pless. Thanks for joining us. Coming up. Make way for these up and coming photographers. We take you to the Circulation Festival here in Paris, a springboard for some of Europe's most promising young talents. From running away to the runway, we meet an Afghan refugee who fled the Taliban and settled in France. Now a glittering fashion career has taken her to the catwalks of New York. And now you see it, now you don't. It's one of the most iconic French monuments, but the pyramid at the Louvre Museum has seemingly disappeared, thanks to an ambitious optical illusion. But first, one of the major challenges for young photographers is getting their work seen by a wider audience. Well, one festival in Paris is dedicated to uncovering up-and-coming artistic talent across Europe. With more than 500 works by some 50 photographers, the Circulation Festival brings the pictures to the people. Now in its sixth year, the event showcases the best of European photography. Olivia salazar Winspear went to check it out. It's a necessary evil of urban life, the morning commute, pushing, shoving and the uninspiring corridors of the metro network. Yet the addition of a few well-chosen photographs brightens up the journey, prompting curiosity or even a smile. It's wonderful, really nice. It makes you think, so it's really good. Oh, it's better than adverts, much better. If we could replace ads with photos, that would be great. The Circulation project gives unprecedented visibility to young photographers like Vilma, who hopes her 21st century still lifes offer an alternative to the commercial airbrushed images more common in the public arena. My images look like 17th century paintings of still lifes, more classic ones, except that here I've replaced the natural elements, the flowers and the fruits, with a plastic material wax cloth. I think that the plasticness of our time, our era, with our consumer values, fast food, fakeness, if you like, I criticize that a bit in this series. Showcasing the work of dozens of photographers from every corner of Europe, the festival's multicultural and multi-platform, exhibited in a number of metro stations as well as at the Saint Quatre Art Centre in the northeast of Paris. David Bart mixes media to create collage-like images. This series revisits the time of Galileo when science and popular beliefs were at loggerheads, a situation he sees today when it comes to climate change. I think the role of an artist is to think about issues other people don't have time to think about. It's not easy to show your work to others, and what's interesting about the Circulation Festival is that you get a platform. It's very open, and that opens a discussion with other people. David travelled to Iceland to make his photographs, whereas fellow artist Gabriella went on a journey back in time, sifting through the archives of the history of photography. Her photographic objects are the fruit of an elaborate artistic process. Starting with other people's artwork, she makes drawings and then turns them into photographic images. I do a lot of line drawings. I was in my studio and I decided to make a photo from it. And I noticed that I had a white sheet hanging around and I thought it would be good to put someone under the sheet to recreate a form, a sculpture, that might suggest a pepper. So I called my friend who shares the studio space and asked her to be the pepper. Shining a light on new talents and exploring the photographic medium in all its forms, Circulation has served as a springboard for some artists who subsequently win residencies, prizes and, more importantly, long-term employment behind the camera. Now, from running away to the runway, an Afghan refugee who fled the Taliban many years ago has crafted a career as a high-end fashion designer here in France. Mina Hamad's exquisite evening and bridal gowns have taken her to New York Fashion Week. Catwalks and haute couture a world away from the horrors of her homeland. Claire Williams has more. Mina Hamed was a nine-year-old refugee when she arrived in France. 19 years later, she runs her own upscale fashion boutique in Lyon. 
She says she's living every little girl's dream. Everywhere in the world, people dream of the same things. It's not just here in France. Even in the most remote countries, people dream of the same wedding and same evening dresses. All little girls dream about that. Her wedding and evening dresses sell for between 800 and 1,500 euros. Most of her customers opt to rent. They pay 250 euros to hire a dress for the evening. She did New York Fashion Week. She's come very far. She's made a success of her life. I'm proud. I'm happy for her. Mina Hamed was invited to New York Fashion Week last autumn. Fifteen of her dresses appeared on the catwalk. When we got to France, it was like paradise at the start. We were like, wow, there are no bombs. Today I laugh about it. But then it was like, whoa, I can really sleep peacefully. I wake up and I'm still alive. In countries like that, they take away your right to wake up. She's never gone back to Afghanistan, not even to visit. But she is planning a trip outside France this year. She hopes to go back to New York for the next round of runway shows. Now you see it, now you don't. It's one of the most photographed French monuments, the Pyramid at the Louvre Museum, an iconic feature of the Paris landscape. Well, street artist JR has created an optical illusion on a grand scale, making the glass structure seemingly disappear. Weeks were spent covering the pyramid in paper sheets to make it blend into the historic palace behind it. The French artist treats the streets as his own open-air museum and says he's redirected the famous pyramid's energy. Let's listen. It was the only way to make it disappear, by playing with the architecture, from one point of view making it completely disappear, like a magician, but then also making it look different from other points of view. So people are taking photos as we're talking to each other, and depending on where they stand, they have a totally different photo. He was friends with Renoir and Monet and best known for his paintings of urban Paris in the Haussmann era. But French impressionist Gustave Caillebotte was also inspired by nature. More than 100 of his artworks are on display at Giverny's Musée des Impressionismes. Sanam Chantier uncovers Caillebotte's secret garden. An abundance of flowers leaping off the canvas. A forest so realistic you can imagine taking a walk along its path. Brimming with weird and wonderful perspectives, Gustav Kaibort's artwork often took his viewers by surprise. We want to walk through this garden. I think he wanted the viewer to mull over the artwork, this space that was presented. We really get the impression that it's a photo, a photo that was taken yesterday. Known as a perfectionist, Kaibot left nothing to chance. This is a very objective view of reality, and it's become stronger little by little, especially the latest paintings of the natural world that are unique and unlike anything other. One of Kaibot's main inspirations comes from his family estate at Yer. That's where he tried out his friend's strong artistic style, among them Monet and Renoir. In his paintings, he would take the viewer along the river and the boat with him. The river at the time was a place that many people went to for bathing, fishing and rowing. So Gustave often put his canvas stand near the river. Kaiwat had yet another passion. The painter found joy cultivating his garden, a project which can be seen today. And his own flora and fauna became the subject of his artwork, like these orchids that are amongst his best-known paintings. He knew the Latin terms, all the essences. He knew when they would flower. In fact, he was a keen gardener. Cabot retired from Paris to another house in Petit Jeanvilliers. There he laid a sumptuous garden, and like this painting, the dahlias, he focused on depictions of the natural world. 
Merci Raymond, or thank you Raymond. That's the name of a brand new exhibition at the Monet de Paris Museum. French avant-garde artist Bertrand Lavier pays tribute to his late friend, new realist artist Raymond Ince, with a collection of installations and stories. Well, the fusion of new works and revisited masterpieces are on display until the 17th of July. We'll leave you with a clip of the show. For more culture, check out our website. Plus, we're also on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Stay with us here on France 24. Lots more coming up after this.